We'll be taking a look at ProCut X made by Pixel Film Studios. And uh, I wanted to thank the company for sending me a uh, demo code to uh, test and review this software. Once you download and install ProCut X, uh, you open up the application. It will immediately show a pop-up where you uh, input your email address. And uh, once you do that, they will send you an email with links to download the appropriate files as well as uh, detailed instructions for installing them. Um, of course, it would da automatically download the ProCut X image file. We're going to open that up and uh, give you some files here. Uh, of course, again, the uh, Intel instructions. Um, downloads the ProCut X keyboard set. Command set, which you uh, have to import into Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, you have to do that uh, to allow the uh, ProCut X software for all the buttons functionality to work, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. And of course, uh, also to install the server portion on uh, the Mac computer you're going to be using it on, uh, and then go ahead and install that. Once you install it on your Mac, you're going to open up System Preferences, and of course down here you're going to have a ProCut X preference. Open that up, and obviously turn the server on. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and, and install the ProCut X keyboard command set. So we're going to go to Final Cut Pro, Commands, and Import. And uh, depending on where you downloaded the command set um, from the file, image file we downloaded early from email. And we got it right here, select it. Takes a few seconds to open. As you can see right here, um, Final Cut Pro uh, says, please enter a new name for the command, and then you would push OK to import it. Um, we did already did that earlier, so we're just going to cancel out. So next thing you need to go is to Final Cut Pro commands again, and ensure the Pro Cut X keyboard set is selected uh, and not the default to uh, ensure the software works correctly. Okay, we're going to go over some of the um, common uh, button layout on the uh, ProCut X software. And uh, of course here you got the uh, jog wheel, which you can advance uh, frame by frame or even a little faster. And uh, of course your forward and reverse buttons, uh, play and pause button at the center. And uh, also for voiceover and recording the uh, two small buttons on the upper left hand side. Uh, your tool buttons for your different tools for Final Cut Pro. Um, action buttons. The read timing buttons, which are for um, slow motion, fast motion. Import, export, and rendering options. Um, audio volume and zooming in and out of the timeline. Um, auto correct, which could be for um, hum and uh, volume and things like that and of course color grading which uses your color board go ahead and look at the uh, the playhead uh, fast forward reverse um, and of course the jog wheel uh, using the jog wheel um, you can just do it uh, slowly frame by frame or even faster and of course in reverse uh, they have buttons right below um, to play the uh, file and to pause it and obviously you have buttons to uh, advance at one frame and reverse. And uh, another thing I like, you can actually advance it um, from one clip to another um, quite fast. And uh, that works quite well. And, uh, of course, in the uh, color grading section, um, just by pressing any of the uh, three buttons, We'll open up the color board, and from there you can do um, incremental changes uh, by using the right and left arrows, uh, just like so. And uh, of course, you uh, just by uh, ticking on the top arrow, you can actually take it one, or by pressing and holding uh, several at once. And then of course you can push the reset, and it will put it back to the way it was. As this is a brand new software, it does have its few problems. Uh, first is a wake from sleep bug that crashes the software when you rewake. 
Uh, this can be worked around by turning off sleep mode while you're working with uh, Pro Cut X. Another problem with the software is the retiming section of the interface. Not all the buttons seem to work. One workaround is retime one clip manually and all the buttons should work as normal. Both bugs are slated to be fixed by the next update. But the real question is, is it really worth it? And uh, that really all depends. Because what I need may not necessarily be what other video editors need. And some video ed editors really want um, tactile feedback they can only get from real analog controls. And uh, to me, that's something that's not really inherent with this software, but it's inherent with all touch ta tablet designs. Um, and also some feel that the cost is too much for this type of program. It's initially introductory price around $24 and once um, a couple of new versions come out, they're going to release it at $40. And to me, considering this is designed as a uh, console interface for a pro video editing software, I think it's uh, kind of on par. Um, and also consider uh, also, there's going to be uh, new features coming out for multi-iPad support, uh, advanced color grading options, and Siri-like voice commands. And myself, I, my own uh, feelings on using the software is I think it really has a lot of potential. Of course, it is a brand new software out there. It does have a few bugs. Uh, if we wait a while and uh, there's going to be a bevy of new features coming out, uh, the, the tech support seems to be very good. Um, they answer my email questions for this review in like 20 minutes. Uh, so I think in the, uh, here in the near future, it's going to be well worth the price.